Welcome to our Digital Marketing Talks, where experts in the field share their experiences with students at Tamwood. In this video, the account manager of Digital Marketing Institute Sean Kenny provides interesting tips for using AI in digital marketing. Hello to everyone. Um, very, very brief bit of background about myself. As Gabriella mentioned, I now work for Digital Marketing Institute and uh, Tamwood are one of our very good partners. So we, we work with Tamwood to basically supply syllabus and digital marketing training. Um, and I've been with DMI for about five years. Before that, I worked for Facebook. So I've worked within social media for a little bit. Uh, I freelanced for a little bit. I've worked within programmatic advertising, um, which most people don't know what that is, but it's generally uh, it banner ads and things of that nature. So altogether, I've been within digital marketing and kind of education for about eight years. And all of that is really just to say and to lead into the topic today about artificial intelligence because the one thing i've noticed about the industry is how much it has changed in that short space of time over eight years um and what we're going to look at today uh albeit we're going to look at it we're going to look at it through a certain prism we're, we're going to look at you know a little bit about understanding it a little bit about how to work with artificial intelligence or specifically chat gpt and then we're going to look at it from the angle of how is it relevant to digital marketing but it artificial intelligence alone looks like one of the things that's probably going to change the landscape the most in the next eight years the last eight years was really just changes to platforms um, there was some automation there was different things that came in data has been a big thing but this looks to be the next next big thing so we thought it would be in uh, we, we thought it would be a nice topic for you today um these are the three areas here on the slide that i'm going to look at today uh first of all we're just going to look at what is chat gpt a lot of you will be familiar with what it is maybe we'll just give it some context and then we're going to lead into something quite specific which is the art of prompting chat gpt the best ways to ask it questions and get the most concise or relevant information out of it and then we're going to look at specifically using it for digital marketing so um Hopefully this is working here. Yeah, so uh, I'll start the first slide with a quote. And it's just, in summary, it's just uh, that generative AI has, you know, basically inspired people in the last year to leave their jobs, start new companies. And it's really leading the way for a whole new future of careers and types of roles for, for people going forward. Um, very brief example, you know, I, I have some friends who work, uh, they're coders. Um, and they work maybe with website development and industries like that, individuals in those companies can do 10 times the amount of work that they used to within a day, in some cases, uh, if they're working with code. So it's something that's really accelerating a lot of industries and, and digital marketing is, is no different. So, so what is it? Let, let's just run through it quickly. So as I say, a lot of you will be familiar with the actual brand names of the, the, the AI companies that are out there. So chat gpt is probably the most well known there are others uh, i'm going to touch on google bar today kind of briefly um it's something that's only been av available in ireland for about six weeks now google bar it rolled out in uh, north america first uh, and you might be familiar with some of these other ones here like dali 2 stable diffusion and then there's a few more that are quite specific they do specific things like uh, canva ai is in integrated into it and that's specifically to do with design and images and that kind of thing. And then we have a lot of big companies putting a lot of money and resources and time into developing their own AI. Microsoft and Adobe are very notable ones. Um, but what is it? Well, currently what chat uh, GPT is, is an AI language tool really. Um, you can ask it questions, it will give you replies. Uh, you can ask it to summarize things for you. you you can essentially use it like a search engine that's a bit more conversational but we shouldn't think of ai ai as just that because as we're going to see on this slide ai has actually been around for quite some time now we just experienced it in in different ways so before let's say 2020 which is quite recent uh, ai was mostly used for spam detection or translation 
or uh, basic Q&A such as uh, chatbots when you went onto a website perhaps and you had a, uh, a customer service question, you might encounter a chatbot. It was essentially AI powered. It was answering your questions using artificial intelligence. Um, moving forward then a little bit, uh, there was some AI out there that was capable of basic copywriting skills. A lot of you will be familiar now for the last few years of you're writing an email uh, and whether it's Google or some other um, email service provider, they can auto complete your sentences. Uh, that's done through uh, artificial intelligence. Um, I touched on an example of uh, people who work with code and developing websites and there's been AI within code now for uh, and widely used in the coding industry for a couple of years. Um, but if we come to last year, it's, it's when it really started to roll out and, and make news headlines and was much more widely adopted. So, and, and the reason for that is, is, is it, the, the jump in sophistication and the things that it can do in the last year. So specifically now AI can generate images, um, manipulate photography, uh, even create short videos. Um, but where we are this year, really what it is, uh, more widespread adoption. Um, particularly when it comes to tools like chat GPT and people using it, uh, as we're going to discuss now, almost like an assistant uh, to help them in their everyday lives. So before I move on, just actually these last two columns give a bit of a prediction about where um, artificial intelligence might be going. Um, and without kind of reading through all of these, because you can look at them in your own time, but I think some of the biggest jumps uh, maybe in the next kind of 10 years will be uh, things like uh, being able to develop your own video game or your own um, book or your own movie, um, basically sophisticated content all by yourself without any background in coding. Uh, and that will that even sounds a little bit mind blowing when I say it now, but that is basically where it's going and the capability of it is going. Um, so, you know, what does um, AI mean for marketing in 2023 specifically? Well, um, now I, I'm going to I'm going to do a deeper dive on specific types of digital marketing roles, but at its most basic level, it's a tool that will help you begin projects. Uh, even if you know nothing about it, it's now more effective than, let's say, just using a search engine like Google if you're just brainstorming or trying to write an article or trying to get some ideas together. Uh, and I think the best way to use it when you're beginning is just applying what I have named here on this slide as EI, um, emotional intelligence, that's your intelligence, your input with the capabilities of artificial intelligence. And definitely whether you're writing an assignment or thinking, I'm not suggesting by the way that you should have AI write your assignments. I don't know how many people are doing that, but uh, whether you're brainstorming an idea, a project or something, or as you move on in your career, or as you apply it to maybe a job that you have, you'll start to find ways to, as it says here, break down workflows and actually just be more productive. Um, and collaboration is a key word here as well. Um, so, and so, and although I'm going to talk about chat GPT uh, today, there are many other, as it says here, apps and, and websites that actually uh, do very specific things that might be of more use to you, depending what it is uh, you want to do. Um, and then just very quickly before we move on, I just want to talk about basically the rise of chat GPT in the last few years. Um, it's the the quickest platform of any kind to get to 1 million users. If we go back to 1999, which feels like a very long time ago now, um, it, it, you know, it took Netflix three and a half years to get that kind of usership. Um, it took a platform like Airbnb two and a half years to get to a million users. Um, Spotify five months, which seemed rapid at the time and chat, GPD did it in five days. So in terms of growth and impact, uh, it's really quite significant. Um, and it currently now has over a million, uh, 100 million users. And the funny thing about this is I, I, I have kind of given a, a variation of this uh, presentation before. And uh, at the time a hundred of just over 100 million users was quite accurate. It was only maybe eight weeks ago. I believe it's, it's over 150 or pro approaching 200. So. Um, but in any case, um, 
we'll move on and we'll start to look at more specific things. Uh, well, actually, one one other point would be um, what is Chat GPT based on? What does it use? What's its kind of lifeblood to work and its data? A lot of you might have heard this already, but essentially, despite kind of maybe alarmists or people in the media, Chat GPT cannot think for itself. It is really just taking existing information or data and using that rapidly to pull together answers to your questions. And where it has the ability to improve is with more data that it can pull from. And if we look at this graph, what we can see is that that data is growing rapidly. Uh, now data can, it's not just your personal data. We all think maybe the first thing we think of when we think of data online is our own personal emails or things we've put up, but it can be content you've wrote online. It, it, it can be a blog, it can be a, a video, it can be a comment under a video section. These are all things that ChatGPT can tap into. So um, as I said before, I think the way to think about it for this particular presentation, or perhaps if you're starting to use it is as your assistant. Um, and here's the things really bullet pointed here that it's most effective at doing uh, or helping you with uh, from the get go. So efficiency boost. We're going to look at some very specific examples of that. Uh, time saving. Uh, I know for me personally, uh, that's a big one. So I write quite a lot of emails or summarize quite a lot of emails uh, through chat GPT. So it saves me a lot of time. Um, it's available all the time as well. Uh, in theory, sometimes it crashes, um, but as an assistant, that's uh, that's pretty effective. Uh, skill enhancement, um, that's essentially learning, you know, learning about things you're interested in or things you're working on. Um, managing your workload, um, so just effect, uh, basically getting more done. And uh, we've, we've touched on it just now, and we're gonna look at it again, but a uh, creativity boost. So it's a great, it's a great way of getting more ideas for something. I have specific examples of how that works really and uh, you know learning and development so um, there's some drawbacks to it too um, it, and I'm actually going to come back to this on one of the last slides as well but you know the drawbacks at the moment are quite simple really and um, sometimes it, it can basically give the wrong information uh, chat GPT or open AI who who uh, owns and uh, has created ChatGPT, actually call these uh, errors hallucinations. Uh, so they say that, you know, AI can have hallucinations or basically it can just give you an answer that's simply not true uh, as if it's, uh, you know, just filling a gap that it, it doesn't really know the answer to or can't, it can't pull the information, the correct information quickly enough together. So it, it gives you something that actually either doesn't make sense or is just not true. Um, it can be, in some cases, um, manipulated to give harmful or biased content. Uh, ChatGPT work, and, and you know the, the team behind that work quite hard to you know uh, eliminate that. But we see it across all AI. Uh, there are ways to manipulate it. Today we're going to look at ChatGPT prompts. Uh, you know how to to get it to do certain things. You can also you know uh, learn how to get it to give biased or harmful information as it says here. So um, that's one drawback. And um, with ChatGPT specifically, um, it does have a limited knowledge in the sense that at the moment, it only uses data generated from the year 2021 or before. Um, and we're gonna look at actually, um, we're gonna mention very briefly Google Bard, which is actually uh, using data uh, from real uh, real-time data up till present day. So uh, that's quite exciting and, and uh, it's going to lead to a lot of developments. But so how can, at the most basic level, how can AI or specifically ChatGPT um, help with creativity? Well, um, anyone that's sat down to write an assignment um, has been given a project to complete uh, any kind of creative writing type of task. Um, you'll understand that writer's block is a real thing, sitting down and not really knowing how to start this project. Where do I begin? Can I summarize it before I begin? And, and it's a great tool for that. I mean, you can literally ask it to, uh, you know, whatever the project might be, let's say it's a marketing project for a shoe company uh, and you've just started the project, you can ask it for some 
general basic ideas of where to start your paper or you know ask it for a kind of a theme for a marketing campaign and all these great ways to jump off and just start writing what it is that you need to be doing um and uh, again i mean we touched on a, a few of those bullet points on that previous slide but you know uh, if you're facing a crazy deadline as it says here uh, and you can be under a lot of pressure you can use it as a time saving tool as an assistant as something to summarize what you're writing uh, proofread for you and lots of different ways to save you time um so um with writing specifically um and it does seem to be one of the most relevant uses for it and 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 the thing it's used for most uh, you actually can try some some other uh, ai apps and websites uh, i've mentioned a few here but they're they're still current uh, they're still in business despite a, a lot of ai businesses popping up and disappearing quickly but uh, write sonic um article forge um neil patel um who is actually someone we work with here at dmi but uh, he he has a, a very good uh, ai creative writing tool and google bard um, who are quite new to the space, really. Uh, as I say, in Ireland, we've only had Google barred for about six weeks, I'm still getting used to it. Um, so th there are other good alternatives, by the way, you know, if you have a project where you, you just want to test alternative tools to see if you get different uh, types of suggestions or, you know, whatever it might be. But um, again, it's, it's, it's a very similar point to the last slide. Um, at the most basic level, it's a great way of getting your creative juices going you know to start a project so now we're going to look at some more specific uses of it and um as i come down here i've kind of numbered these i've kind of got um a number of different uh kind of principles around prompts so what we're going to look at now we've kind of moved on we've kind of covered in a nutshell what chat gpt is but now we're going to move on to prompts how can you actually um or you know what's the best way to approach asking chat gpt questions or giving it instructions to elicit a certain type of response. Um, and that's really key in terms of how useful it's gonna to be to you. So the first slide here is an example of a really bad prompt. Um, so let's imagine for the purpose of about the next 10 slides that my project is um, around TikTok and it's um, you know around a travel blog that I wanna do on TikTok and specifically for Brazil. That's my whole example we're going to walk through here. Now, if that's ultimately my goal to have an effective TikTok campaign for uh, tourism in Brazil, starting off with a prompt like tell me TikTok is definitely not going to get me anywhere close to that goal. Uh, it's a really broad query. Um, it's leaving the reply open for lots of information that are completely not relevant to what you want. So let's quickly move away from that to a slightly better one, explain TikTok marketing. It's a little bit more specific. It's a little bit more focused. And the kind of response that you're gonna get is gonna be obviously specific to marketing strategies for TikTok. Um, and here's a better input though, again, because it's specific and being specific is, is, is kind of a, a key with ChatGPT you simply say list five strategies that boost organic reach on TikTok. It's specific because we've asked for five, they're strategies, and it's around organic reach, not paid advertising on TikTok. And um, this is the best type of uh, prompt when you're specific about exactly what it is that you want. So the principle here is the quality of your input into ChatGPT really matters in terms of what you're gonna get back out. Um, and here's uh, just the kind of response that you might get if you say list five strategies that boost or, uh, organic reach on TikTok. And I am leading in here to my project in Brazil uh, around TikTok, but it, it's it's giving us here, um, only four are visible on the screen, but it's telling us about, you know, a little bit about high quality content, about trend participation, about the use of hashtags and keywords, and how to engage a community on TikTok. Now, what's crucial, um, as a kind of follow-up principle, keeping on track with this kind of imaginary project that I have, is continuing the conversation or having follow-up questions. Whenever you have something in mind, like a goal where you want to get to, uh, you, you want to write a blog or you want to have a movie script or whatever it is, you're probably going to have to have a conversation with ChatGPT. You're never going to 
capture a good response from one prompt. So the second principle is continuing the conversation and kind of how to do that. So staying on track with the kind of project I have, I, I've got this answer here uh, about organic strategies for TikTok. Um, but you'll remember that what I want to do really on TikTok is I, I, I want to, um, you know, I want to go about uh, making content, travel content from Brazil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to make a prompt here where I hone in on this, this second one, trend participation. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to follow up with a prompt, prompt that basically says, tell me more about this and, and relate it to, you know, what it is that I want. So this simple follow-up question is please expand on point two and it will uh, and it will usually give you five to ten points um, and then what I can do next is um, I can say relate this to a travel blogger visiting Brazil so it takes all the kind of concepts and things that it put out there as good organic strategies and does a really really good job of relating it to the project that I'm working on straight away um, and it actually pulls in information I, you know, um, I might not have known about, or it, it's actually giving advice here that's quite specific. If, if you look at point three, you know, it's saying samba and carnival, uh, carnival even I should say. Brazil is famous for its lively music and vibrant festivals like carnival. Create videos that capture the energy, excitement, show off dance moves, share insights, and so on. So it's actually pushing me in a in a, in a very specific direction with this project. Um, and uh, we're going to keep with this example, but we're going to move on to the third principle, which is then about tone and the things that chat GPT can do with, with tone. Because the answers that you get back, they're, they're first, you should always think of them as first answers and uh, not perfect answers. Uh, you, for the purposes of what you're doing, whether it's writing or a movie script again, or, you know, whatever it might be, it could even be coding anything. Um, you you know you might want a certain style to it. Uh, in this case, we're we're going with a travel blog. Uh, I might want a tone. Uh, you know, it could be very informative. I want a lot of detail in it. I want very specific detail, and I want it to be concise. Or maybe the tone is humor. I want it actually to be very funny, uh, engaging, exciting, uh, kind of witty. Um, in this case, um, this is our last prompt. Uh, relate one of those organic strategies to what I'm doing here with my travel blog, visiting Brazil. Um, now my next instruction is to um, take this point, number two, and um, what I wanted to do is write a video script for it. So you can see we're probably only, I've lost count, but maybe six or seven prompts in, and already I've within my project arrived at a point where I've got a video script quite specific for what I want to do. It's for a TikTok campaign in Brazil. I've got information from ChatGPT specific to both Brazil and TikTok and organic strategies. And now I've arrived at the point of a script. Um, and this is, you know, uh, th this particular type of script has a tone. So we're coming back to tone. And, you know, what I've done here is um, or what it can do is you can say, make the tone more playful and upbeat. And actually that prompt is, is the, the uh, output from above. So uh, it will actually reword and rewrite this again um, in a completely different style with the same information, just a different style. So here it is, uh, sorry, this is the original one. Uh, it's quite straightforward. It's a little bit dry in tone. Um, and we've asked it to be more playful and upbeat and it, it's coming back with more colorful language and, you know, kind of exactly what you asked it for. And then what you can do, and I haven't done on the examples on the slides, but you can, you can keep regenerating, you know, that response. Just give me something a little bit different. Let's try something different again. And then when you find something you can like, you, you know, you can basically drill down even more and you can say, I like that, but also do this. And then you, you can keep going like that and, and you can arrive with a very, very specific script in line with what you wanted. Um, and now just before we move off tone, you know, our prompt here was to make it more humorous, whatever, but there's there's lots of different ways you can ask it to change the tone. You know, make it more conversational, like you're speaking with a person, uh, write it in plain English, so it's very understandable. Um, make it more humorous, make it more sad, uh, so you can play with emotions. 
um, make it more professional depending on who your audience is. I've done that for some emails or contracts where I've asked it to write it. Uh, I tell it, I tell the uh, ChatGPT the audience. I say it's for let's say C-suite people, people who work in quite uh, high up in an organization. Or you can uh, go in the opposite way and you can say this is for you know customers. So you know please please write in the, in a in a tone appropriate for that. Um, and and one point that's not in this slide, uh, but it's um, something you can do and you can have a lot of fun playing around with. Uh, you, you can pick um, a celebrity or someone who's well known, and certainly there's a lot of content about them online, and you can ask to write it in their tone. Uh, so if you had a comedian in mind, uh, you could say, you know, please write me a joke or write me a poem in the style of this comedian or in the style of this writer or this journalist. And if they are well known enough and there's enough data online about them, it will actually do that and it does it remarkably well. So um, that's, that's another tool in your box if, if you're playing around with tone. Um, and then picking the right type of prompt. So, you know, it's, as it says here, kind of just as you need the right tools for any kind of construction job or DIY job, um, picking the right prompts, you know, is, is going to get you to, um, you know, what you need to do in your project uh, a lot more quickly and, and efficiently. So um, here's some, the, the next few slides are examples of capabilities it has or tools that it has. Okay, so uh, rewriting and proofreading, really time effective, time saving tools. Um, the first at the, the top half is an example of a rewrite. So if you're writing something yourself, uh, you can kind of get the general idea together and then you can just input that and say, please rewrite this line or this paragraph or these re rewrite these 1000 words I have uh, copy and pasted here in this particular tone. So that's a really, really effective uh, writing tool that's relative to marketing. If you've got any marketing text content communications uh, that could save you quite a lot of time. Proofreading. Uh, so you can simply, uh, again, you can copy in some text and you can say proofread this and it will um, correct the grammar, um, the spelling mistakes, and maybe even make adjustments on tone as well to have maybe, you know, the tone consistent throughout your article or your blog and so on. Role playing. Uh, this is one of my favorites with ChatGPT. If you're just looking to have fun with ChatGPT, this, this is probably the way to have the most fun. Uh, now, the example, we're going to keep all the examples, um, you know, kind of relevant to business and so on. But, um, you know, you can do some some quite funny things with role playing. In this particular example, uh, and I'll give another one as well, but, you know, you, so you basically tell G chat GPT the role you want it to play. So in this in, in, in this particular case, you are a personal fitness coach, uh, coach and, um, you know, give me an exercise and diet plan for a beginner uh, looking to get in shape and it will act and give responses like it is that particular person or in that particular role. Um, you know, one I've used personally myself is um, I'm trying to do some work for a client and I say, <laughs> you are a expert, uh, world renowned CEO. Uh, give me a five point plan of how to, you know, work with this company, and it will give out, you know, quite good, rational, um, quite often very helpful uh, content, uh, like as as if you were talking to a CEO. So, so role playing is uh, an important tool, and uh, we might see a few slides down how we can kind of bring it back into uh, a project or a practical situation. Uh, summarizing, um, this slide didn't come out too well, but um, what I've done here is copied and pasted about a thousand words and said, summarize this. And the output is, you know, five bullet points below. Uh, and what's amazing with this, and this is something really easy to try, uh, think of a book that you're familiar with or a film or any piece of kind of well-known uh, media and ask it, ask it to summarize it in five bullet points. You know, uh, it's really in incredibly effective at doing that. Um, so it's good at doing that in terms of, from, from a learning point of view, if, if there's a book you know you're just not going to read because you don't have the time for it, but you want the key concepts from that book, 
and you just want it instantly, uh, it's capable of doing that for you. There's another prompt uh, that you'll see if you if you go doing your own research on chat B, uh, GPT, and it, it's it cropped up quite a lot for me when I was doing right, my research. But it's a, a very a very helpful prompt. It's very specific though. Uh, it's to say, um, give me um, the uh, most important uh, eighty percent. Summarize. Uh, the 80% of this book or the 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 80% of m most important things contained within the book um you know in in um you know uh five bullet points let's say that that kind of prompt um where you're looking for specific things and it it is again it's just really effective at doing it so remember that as a tool summarizing um and then um questions and answers so um i mean this is really obvious and we're touching on it in almost every slide but um you can have quite sophisticated, compl complicated questions. And it's really good at giving very simple, easy to understand answers. So quantum computing is about the most complicated thing I can think of. Um, when you say, what is it? Uh, essentially, for someone who has no clue, um, it, it, it gives you, you know, something quite understandable here and concise in its, res in its response, telling you, um, you know, a bit basically an overview or the most important information about it and what's remarkable as well and i believe it's on the very next slide but you can you can ask it to explain concepts um well actually it's going to come a slide after but you can ask it to explain concepts to a certain audience so instead of saying explain quantum computing to you know just explain it you can say explain it for a five-year-old or explain it for you know an adult or you know and so on um so it's capable of doing that uh, brainstorming we we've we've touched on it and, and we're going to touch on it again when we look at specific examples but it's it's very good at just getting a project going or some writing going you basically can just ask it to brainstorm 10 ideas or 20 ideas um and it will do that and it will give a lot of variation as well, which is really what you want in a brainstorm. You want a few different angles. Um, tutoring or just basically learning. Um, this touches on what I was saying before, but it, it can, in terms of output for questions, you, you know, like this example, explain the concept of photosynthesis to a fifth grader. And it will actually use language a fifth grader can understand and it, it will use analogies that a fifth grader can understand so for tutoring education really uh really helpful um and obviously for writing and and for writing what's fascinating about it is or you know really impactful is the amount of the word count it will give you back i mean you can literally ask it to to write a 1000 word blog i i think it's capped the free version's capped at a, a thousand words uh it might have changed um, and there's a paid version, which is, I think, capped at something crazy like 20,000 words. But uh, so in terms of writing, in terms of generating content, as we often do in marketing, digital marketing, creating uh, posts, blogs, video scripts, um, it, it can do it, the, the amount of content it can churn out for you is quite extensive. Um, and writer's block. And uh, I'll move on from this quickly because because we've touched on it and it's that thing of getting going with a project but um you know um it's uh, this slide here just illustrate illustrates you know a good example so complete my sentence uh, it's gonna haven't we haven't really looked at this concept from this angle yet but you know you can be quite lazy and say seo is important because and it will finish that sentence um with um you know something uh very relevant understandable and um you know so it's it's it, it's highly effective um, for writing. So now we're going to move on to, um, well, this concept is is an acronym, big, and we're going to apply this now to some digital marketing roles. And we're going to be a little bit specific here as we kind of wrap this up in the last 10, 15 minutes. We're going to keep it about digital marketing. Uh, and we're going to use this big acronym that uh, I'd like everyone to try remember uh, if they're playing around with it for the first time. So really the best way to approach uh, a project or just using chat GPT in general is not just to ask it questions, but to come at it with these kind of three things here, giving it background so it has enough context to answer what you want, 
then following up with instruction and including guidelines or parameters of what you want. That's how you're going to get really high quality um, you know, feedback from it. Um, so we're going to look at some examples of that. So um, as it's relevant to digital marketing role. So let's start with the content marketer. So for anyone that doesn't already know, content marketers, they essentially generate content. Now you might, it might be someone that works with video. It might be someone that writes uh, scripts, uh, you know, that relate to, you know, uh, websites, uh, writing articles and so on. Um, technically content marketers work in social media, uh, producing images, um, you know, posting and so on and so on. So in that particular area, uh, it can be quite effective. Excuse me for a moment, take a drink. So let's bring all our tools together and everything we've been talking about for these examples. So <clears throat> using the kind of big uh, acronym or tactic and pulling everything together, what we could do as a content marketer is say, um, here's the background. Uh, it's going to that, that tool of uh, using it as a role play. Uh, so uh, you are, or as a world-class copywriter in an agency, you have been assigned to uh, assist with an outdoor gear retailer that prioritizes sustainability uh, with products and offerings. Then we follow up with the instruction. Um, craft five, that's being specific, attention grabbing headlines for a blog um, that are centered around eco-friendly camping practices. And then to further refine this, we're gonna, we're gonna give it some parameters or guidelines. And we're gonna say, keep the headlines concise and limit them to 12 words or less. Uh, infuse the headlines with curiosity. So that's this thing of tone. We're tapping into tone now. Um, Infuse the headlines with curiosity to entice clicks and encourage social media sharing and ensure it engages outdoor and environmental advocates. So that there is very, very specific and it's pulling together everything we've just looked at in the previous slides. And it gives you, you know, very kind of uh, accurate information uh, that you most likely are going to be interested in or is going to be quite close to what it is you wanted and again you've then got the 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 you know the the avenue of being able to follow up and say i like headline five it's closest to what i want give me some examples like that and then it will regenerate and we'll give more examples close to what it is that you like um in this case i've actually said example four right so you know let's go with option four um and then, you know, let's write a blog post based on this headline. Um, it, it gives us this. Um, and then, you know, we've just done, we've just started, you know, that thing of getting over writer's block or, you know, getting on with writing. We've just went from our headline and the bones of a blog in, you know, two or three prompts. So that's, that's how effective that is for content marketers. Uh, there's a lot of overlap with what content marketers do and, and social media managers, um, but we'll look at another example and we're gonna use big again. So um, we tell chat, chat GPT that its role is a social media manager for a dynamic tech car startup uh, that has been tasked with promoting the launch of a new electric vehicle on Twitter. And that actually is quite specific if you think about it as background, uh, although it's brief. Um, we've said for Twitter, we've said the type of company, um, and you know we've given it a role uh, all in the background. Uh, the instruction developed five initial tweets for Twitter, um, and introduced key features and sustainability benefits of the new EV model car. And then we give it guidelines again. Um, it's always best practice. So, you know, just telling a little bit about Twitter, basically, and the content format, you know, it's 280 characters. Uh, the post, we needed to generate interest and excitement around, you know, a new product. And uh, we needed to, you know, we give it a little bit about the audience, ensure it engages tech enthusiasts, environmental advocates, and potential EV buyers. So quite a good input there. Uh, going back to that kind of concept of quality input, quality output. So um, it gives us exactly uh, what we wanted, uh, of course. And then what we do again, which is always best practice, is we're going to follow up or we're going to give feedback. So this is an, a, an important point too. You might not necessarily always like what you get the first time around. And 
you know, the best way to go about improving is to kind of tell it like we have in this example. This doesn't feel like the start of a Twitter thread. Um, that's that's kind of vague in one way, but it's telling us that this is not quite correct for what we want. Make it clear. Um, um, it's the start of a series of connected tweets, which entices the user to click to read the rest of the thread. So we've kind of followed up with a bit more information and then it obviously regenerates in line with that. Um, but then we've come back with more feedback. Thanks, but we're looking for five starter suggestions. Um, and then it will lead on. And all of this, this entire example, um, I mean, it's specific to social media managers, it's Twitter, you know, but in general, it, it links in with that idea of having a bit of a relationship with it. We talked at the start about, you know, introducing your own emotional intelligence into, you know, working with the, the AI feature. And that's what you're doing, you're giving a feedback. And actually that's how chat GPT improves itself is true feedback. Um, but if you're gonna get anywhere with a project or a task using it, the feedback's really important. So uh, we're gonna look at a, another example. And I personally, I think this is probably SEO is the area of digital marketing that uh, chat GPT or AI in general uh, has made the most impact straight away. For anyone that, that doesn't know, just very simple. The reason that for that is SEO, was in the past and, and and to some extent still is a, a very um tedious kind of job where you're looking for keywords you're looking at the competition of keywords and you could be for a particular project looking at literally a thousand keywords and trying to identify the best ones uh, and that's quite hard to do without information when you're starting off um but chat gpt because it, it can crawl the internet basically in, in lightning speed it can not only be talking about suggestions for keywords, but it has the information from the data available online in terms of what the best type of keywords are. And it also has access to, you know, understand search results and what ranks the best and so on. So it can really be impactful. Um, but um, again, we're gonna go with our big concept. So background, you're an SEO professional, you've researched and prioritized keywords to target for a specific topic. Again, we're being then in the instruction being specific about the output. We want five title tag variations uh, that are engaging and include target keywords. And then we're going to follow up with our guidelines here. Um, and we're just setting parameters around it. 60 characters, uh, you know, using exact match, which is a thing in SEO um, and, and so on. And really, um, Oh, and, and then we can give it some further input here as well. And th this is true of any example, but you can say, you know, here's the keywords or here's the thing we, you know, that we want you to work off. And again, it's just, it's doing an incredible amount of work or saving an incredible amount of time. Uh, I know myself doing keyword research, used to pull up keyword planner and look through keywords for hours. Uh, but here it's, it's giving ideas and putting those keywords together into sentences. Um, they're gonna help your blog, or your website rank, uh, so incredibly effective. Um, and again, this is just an example of giving a feedback. So make uh, less like a compelling blog post headline and more keyword focused. So uh, you know what that would be in you know for anyone who's not too familiar with SEO, saying make it more keyword focused is essentially saying focus on it getting the blog to rank on Google as opposed to you know, it being kind of a humorous headline and so on. So these are kind of instructions and feedback you can give it. Um, and then what you can do is you can, uh, again, you can follow up with your preferred choice, excuse me, and uh, you can drill down into that. So, so far, I, I think we're doing okay for about an hour. We're gonna be hopefully finish the next five minutes, but um, we kind of covered off maybe some examples of, you know, how it is specific to digital marketing, but you can kind of see in those examples that those could be applied to anything. They, they could be applied to creative writing. They could be applied to, you know, a project you're working on in the finance industry or within HR, you know, or whatever it might be. And there's lots of types of things we haven't touched on capabilities it has, um, we haven't touched on today. It's incredibly effective at writing code. So, you know, if you've no 
background or understanding of how to write, uh, you know, uh, Java code or, or whatever, Python is another type of code, you can, you know, through playing around with it, get, get it to, to spit out code that you could use to implement on a website to, to give you what you want. Um, another thing it's really good at is doing calculation. Um, so, you know, if <laughs> it sounds like one of those kind of uh, very annoying uh, mathematics questions from, you know, when you're in high school, but, you know, if I'm driving a car at 60 kilometers and my destination is 40 kilometers away, but I got to stop for five minutes in the middle and there's going to be traffic that's going to slow me down 10 minutes, how long will it take me to get there? It can do stuff like that instantly. Uh, and if that's part of the, you know, your project or what you're working on, and it might be more relevant to say engineers, you know, uh, it, it can do calculus, for example, you know, it's you can see kind of some of the main points we touched on in terms of time saving and so on. It's just incredibly effective. So, um, kind of wrapping up, um, just again on its limitations. I mean, it's trained on a, on, on a data set, Chat GPT is, uh, which ends, um, you know, it's kind of knowledge, if you like, ends at the last thing that happened in September uh, 2021. So, if you ask it for anything present day, it's not really going to know. Uh, I mean, if you ask it, you know, how do you think the stock market is going to do next week based on everything that's happening, world events and so on? It, it, it comes back with a generic response. I'm sorry, I do not have access to real time data. I think there's a re one of the main reasons ChatGPT put this guardrail around it of 2021 was so people couldn't ask, you know, certain types of questions that might be intrusive or, uh, you know, dangerous or misleading for people uh, people asking you know what sports team is going to win a game tomorrow or you know stuff like that or, you know pe people looking to to use it for certain means having said that uh, it does provide a a limitation when you're doing research uh, we're, we're missing a whole year and more there in terms of uh, <clears throat> you know content that's come out any movie or book or anything that's come out in the last year it's not going to know about it uh, so that's that's one limitation uh, absolutism uh, is what I've named it here, but um, there's many different ways of thinking about this or many different ways you will see this problem. But it, as it says here, it sometimes speaks more confidently than it should. Um, it can make claims that it, it is presenting like facts when they're not really facts. And that's troublesome. Uh, it's, it's mainly troublesome if you are relying on the information you're getting for a project or a presentation or something uh, and if you just go with what it gives you sometimes it, it's actually wrong and um, why that happens specifically i'm not 100 percent sure but it can fill in gaps in what it doesn't know with incorrect information so we today we've been talking about mostly content ge generating content written content there is an element of having to proofread everything it writes uh, specifically or particularly if you're capable of correcting it, it's, it's just worth doing. Um, and single modal. Now, what I mean by that is really chat GPT does one thing. It works with text. Uh, you know, it can, like I said, work with code or it can do calculus. So technically, you know, you kind of work with numbers or calculations, but uh, this is all in text form in written form. So as a free user, as of today with ChatGPT, you can't really ask it to give you a video for, you know, your project, you know, just please create this video start to finish for me. You can't do that. And at the moment, it's all text based. But there are many other tools out there that either plug into ChatGPT or they're just separate AI ventures that are working on that right now. Um, and what's worth mentioning before I go, if I... It, I, I bet if, if I was giving this presentation next year, I may well be giving the entire thing on Google Bart as opposed to ChatGPT. Uh, hard to predict, of course, but um, Google Bart, as I, I, I think I've mentioned it twice or three times now, in Ireland, we've only had it for six weeks. I guess why I keep saying that is I, would, I really wanted to use it uh, for the f few months it was only available in North America. It just became available and uh, I've started to use it. And I think just the single biggest difference with Google Bard is uh, it does have access to uh, real-time information. And uh, this is uh, asking 
Google Bard itself uh, do you have access to real-time information and it does and and that that gives you other applications for the technology right so uh, the example here is you know you could literally ask it about the weather uh, in London today or right now uh, I think that's the example I've used on the next screen um, you know uh, and it can tell you that based on live data available online or through different apps so there's a lot of different applications for that. Um, you know, you could ask it to give you give you a summary of the news this week, for example. Um, you know, so this is relatively new. Um, it's in some areas not as strong as ChatGPT. Um, I haven't used Google Bard extensively enough to kind of make the comparisons and give the feedback myself but uh apparently you know some of the kind of creative writing functions uh, it's not quite as good at and sometimes it's it's harder to prompt um and get those kind of specific replies like we've been kind of demonstrating here uh, on the previous slides but no doubt with an engine like google behind it that's going to improve so uh Maybe uh, you know you might uh, instead of starting with ChatGPT, start with Google Bard and see and see how you like that too, and try apply some of the same concepts. So that kind of uh, brings us to a close. Um, I hope uh, it's been informative in some way. I've tried to keep it about digital marketing, but I hope that there's kind of overall kind of themes and ideas in there that no matter what you're doing, um, you know uh, whether it be throughout the rest of your kind of uh, college university experience or going into the workplace e even by then and the advances that come uh it, it should be quite a helpful uh assistant but um i'm going to conclude it there i think i'll throw it back over to gabriella i don't know if people have questions uh we've almost done an hour so i i don't know i i know how it is when you're when you're in class uh you know, you probably need a break or want to get out of the room for a few minutes. So I, I won't try to keep everyone too long, but if there's any questions, I'd be happy to try answer them. Perfect. Thank you so much, Shen. So yeah, I would like to thank you very much, Shen, for your talk today. It was really useful. I think that, um, yeah, we had great ideas on how to use ChatGPT effectively for the assignment. Uh, and yeah, we appreciate very much your time and you're welcome to come uh, anytime that you want. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll definitely take you up on that. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, hopefully I'll be in Canada uh, sometime next year. So hopefully oh, we get yeah. to drop in and so, say hello to everyone. Yeah. Come visit yeah. Tamworth, whether it's in Toronto or Vancouver. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. It will do. Um, thank you all very much. Pleasure to present for you. And uh, you never know, uh, might see you someday next year. Yeah, take care. <laughs> All right, take care. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.